The road towards more performance, better efficiency and better economics for semiconductors is inevitably going to involve specialization in chips. And for the economics part of this equation to work, chiplets are a necessity. Intel have already shown us that they are heavily invested in chiplets going forward with the announcement of Arrow Lake, which they are calling disaggregated, meaning it uses chiplets and 3D fovers for the interconnect. But what comes after that? Well, it looks like Intel is preparing what they call hyperchips, highly flexible chips with a novel way to connect chiplets together. Could these hyperchad chips get Intel back on top? Let's dive in. This video is sponsored by URCDKeys.com. If you buy a retail Windows 10 key, you could spend $100 or more. But if you buy an OEM key from URCDKeys.com, a Windows 10 Pro key will cost you only $15 when you use the coupon code C25. The keys work globally, and you can even get a free upgrade to Windows 11 from Microsoft. After you've made your purchase, you will find your key in your purchased orders in the URCDKeys website. Click on Get Keys and copy the key. Then in Windows, click on Start and type Activate, and then click Activation Settings. Then click Change Product Key, paste your key you just purchased, and click Next. Your copy of Windows is now activated. If you want Office 2021 Professional, you can use the same C25 discount code and get it for just $65. URCD Keys is running a mid-year sale with some cool mechanical keyboards, gaming mice, and even gaming chairs. A big thanks to urcdkeys.com for sponsoring today's video. Check the links in the description to get your cheap OEM Windows keys today. Eagle's Lab recently published some exclusive performance projections for Arrow Lake, and if these numbers are representative of the final product, then the Raptor Lake refresh should yield a modest 1-2% more performance, while Arrow Lake anywhere between 10-20% to increase, which I would say is not spectacular, but still pretty interesting considering the change to what Intel calls disaggregated chips. More interesting is the integrated graphics performance of Arrow Lake, which is a whopping 240% increase compared to the iGPU in the 13900K. The iGPU in Arrow Lake is rumored to be packaged using 3D Fovorous. While if the iGPU in Arrow Lake is its own stacked chiplet, we can infer that Intel will be releasing chiplets-based GPUs probably as early as next year. Intel made the mess of the Falcon Shores roadmap, initially announcing it as a composable architecture that allowed for a adjusting the CPU to GPU ratios, so that means how many tiles you want included for CPU and for GPU in a package. But that has since been postponed to Falcon Shores 2, which will only release in 2026. So Falcon Shores will now be GPU only, in a period where AMD will have its MI300 designs and then Nvidia its Grace Hopper designs ready. Seems to me that as far as HPC and AI is concerned, Concerned, Intel can kiss that market goodbye, as it will now be a whole generation behind going forward. It's a massive fail from Pat and team. But what about client GPUs, the ones that actually matter for us PC enthusiasts? Well, I asked around and Battlemage was indeed originally designed to be an MCM-based design. But with this whole fiasco around delays and packaging and interconnect problems, a multi-chip module for Battlemage seems uncertain certain at this point. There is some hope though. Several patents have emerged that show Intel's plans to create multi-chip modules in a really interesting way. These will both impact CPUs, GPUs and APUs from what I gather, making the whole XPU strategy finally viable. Curiously, Intel has patented these on the hyperchips, which is a cool name for sure. The patents are all complementary and I'll only cover a small portion of them. You can find links to them in in the video description below if you want to dig deeper. The first thing worthy of note is the symmetrical bumps for high-speed transfer in a 3D package. They can be oriented in any direction, so at a 270 degree angle or at a 90 degree angle, meaning you can configure a two-chiplet package or a four-chiplet package just by rotating the dies. This means that there will need to be some demultiplex correction because the bits will be rotated and sent in the wrong 
order. One thing to keep in mind is that while MCM makes sense for high-end products like CPUs, FPGAs and HPC processors, the low-cost segment doesn't actually benefit from an MCM approach, because the added costs of packaging and interposer render it uncompetitive. Another problem is when you are targeting longer distance within a package on an organic substrate, you run into a ton of complications with higher power consumption due to data transfer penalties and to higher complexity of the chips. So if two chiplets are actually close to one another, say just a few millimeters, the current multi-chip integration techniques can be inadequate. We see that in AMD's 7000 series GPUs, which end up having excessively high power consumption and complexity, negating most of the benefits of a chiplet's configuration. So you need a lower power solution for data transfer, something under 0.5 picojoule per bit, and you need lower cost I.O. that doesn't require an I.O. die or an interposer, both of which add considerable cost to the package. Another hidden cost is the sheer amount of analog engineers and layout engineers that you need to enable porting of different technologies and different chip orientations. So when all of these costs are added up, you end up with an unviable product like the 7900XTX and XT at launch, only now months after launch getting into the buyable territory, but still not competitive with Nvidia's monolithic GPUs. The upcoming 7700XT and 7800XT will exacerbate this problem further. So this is where Intel's solution for hyperchips MCM comes in. So in this direct die-to-die -die approach, there is no I.O. die. And although the example in the pattern shows 12 bumps, this number is just for illustration purposes. Also, the bumps are much smaller than what's shown here, to the point where you can have other logic in that area, like SRAM or gates. The links between chiplets have also the same length, which means you don't run into timing issues, as you do, for instance, with Ryzen. There's also no need for an interposer or silicon bridge, as the chip-to-chip -chip communication is done on the package substrate directly. You eliminate the need for complex physical layers and make porting much easier. Another patent that looks to address Intel's beta bob yield rate with some hyperchat energy is this three-dimensional stacking arrangement that allows more advanced nodes to be used on the dies connected to the interposer, which can have a significantly smaller footprint by sandwiching other less advanced nodes directly to the more advanced die. So integrating dies on this active interposer enables a smaller form factor and the ability to reconfigure what dies go on top of the interposer meaning you can use this for a CPU, but also for a GPU. So these, along a few other patents that Intel has recently been granted, set the stage for a future roadmap made almost exclusively of multi-chip designs. Seeing as this flexibility can forego the need for complex layouts, you can literally have a small die that can scale up in multiples in a larger package, but with a smaller footprint than what we're seeing with AMD's approach, and also with better energy efficiency. Note that Intel is courageously projecting the follow-up to Arrow Lake to the second half of next year already, which seems highly optimistic. In fact, I would be surprised if Arrow Lake actually launches on this 20 angstrom node, which is basically 2 nanometer. I think it's more likely it will be backported to 3 nanometer, and then following that, a port on 2 nanometer with minor changes. As for Battle Mage, the DGPU, it's certainly possible that it's tile-based, but I'm not sure if the economics there will be worth it. There's a reason Nvidia hasn't moved to chiplets, despite having chiplets researched well before AMD and Intel. The data transfer cost and the latency are still tipping the scales in favor of monolithic, but we'll see. As far as the numbers shown by Eagle's lab, I wouldn't put too much stock in that. I would be surprised if Arrow Lake didn't have a jump in performance of around 20 to 30 percent versus Raptor Lake refresh from the node shrinks alone, so even higher than that is definitely possible. Now the big highlight for me of these new packaging techniques is the possibility of adding a standalone graphics chip to the package. I think these next generation of SOCs from both AMD and Intel 
will basically eliminate the entry-level GPU market and are quickly encroaching into the mid-range. In a time where mid-range GPUs are becoming less accessible for the budget conscious, I think this will be a very positive pivot for the PC industry. Of course, Intel's competitors are not sitting still. Stay tuned as I will be looking into their own upcoming solutions soon.